I haven't heard that intro in a long time. I love it. <laughs> You've been slacking. Oh, dude, I know. Is that just because so... we haven't been making podcasts? <sighs> well, we're announcing it today. Michael Hill here and I are going to be doing a podcast three times a week for four hours each day. Just kidding. And I was a little really <laughs> drunk when I, when I agreed to that. <laughs> You were pretty good classic, drunk when we were golfing. But classic overcommit from my yeah. <laughs> But we are gonna commit. We have committed to uh I was I was very so you know it comes about in a lot of different ways. I was very committed to when I was when I was helping Faz out and doing his podcast and doing that stuff, I was committed on Thursdays. Um mm-hmm. in reality, when Faz stopped doing his own podcast, that's when I was like, I, I kind of was like, okay, well, I'm gonna just do my own. Right. So which I've been doing anyway. But then I didn't have the commitment of I need I need somebody else on the other side. Otherwise, I get just so caught up in everything else that's going on. Right. There's so much stuff that's happening. So uh, Michael Hill here and I we usually do a pretty good podcasts. I think people enjoy it, and really, it's probably because his sexy voice. Um, not really my knowledge. It's and, and he also has more knowledge than I do. He's amazing. Like he's. We should change your name to the D-Gen Master or something like that. He always got the great ones. But uh, we're going to try and do every other week. Um, and yeah. I'm going to stop saying try. We are going to do every other week. Um, I can do. I can commit to every other week during the summer. And then when the kids go back to school, I can do weekly. Oh, boom. Yeah. There you go, guys. See? And uh, when the kids go back to school. It'll be fun. Um, we've got something on the screen here that uh, is going to be a, a big topic today. Um, I... Most everybody that's going to listen to this at knows that Gala um, announced that. And it, I want to be clear that it is this is all my personal opinion and Michael's personal opinion and what's going on and Blake that's here. Um, nothing is set in stone yet. So this is all, to put it in the words of Brink, is, is, is up for discussion um, into what this proposal is going to be put forth for. So and it's a governance proposal, what it says here, implement implementing a node-based cumulative lifetime point structure with new logarithmic function and advanced decentralization. So I want to point out a couple of things first. The decentralization part um, is their key thing because when Brink keeps talking about stuff, he keeps talking about decentralization and that's their main goal. Okay. Which is great. I'm all for decentralized. I love it. I mean, that's why I started NerdNode. I wanted to create a, de- a truly decentralized node network that is there to be able to host <clears throat> or allow people to use it. We have a lot of big plans for it. Um, and, and that was accumulation of Gala, like that came from Gala itself, the node side there, and has just expanded from that. So the the there's two so decentralization is a decentralization is a big one we'll get that one in a second the other big one that uh, was dropped in here is and it was kind of hidden there's a, basically two lines and it's towards the bottom it basically just says we're going to implement a an honor system essentially so they're splitting it up into um points and your node you're going to get your your base points it's always going to be there um, and then there's going to be bonus points. And those bonus points are going to be equal to the same points, but you earn those bonus points by running your nodes, uh, running less nodes per account, mind mm-hmm. you. So the node owners, uh, such as myself, uh, Black Harp, and other people that we know who have multiple nodes uh, are going to get dinged. And that's this, uh, you can see the proposal, it has the little, these are examples, mind you. This nothing here again is is set in stone yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see here the one point, uh, you know, nodes five point seven times log ten to the one plus one is one point. So if you're running one node, you get one extra point right. for that. Yep. If you're running two nodes, you get one point <clears> seven <throat> points. So you're gonna as you increase your nodes, you still get more in distribution. But percentage-wise, or it benefits the lower node owner, the, the the guy that owns, you know, the least amount. I get it. Ideal situation: fifty billion or fifty thousand nodes are on fifty thousand uh, individual. individual machines owned by 50, all individual people. people. Right? It's that's the perfect scenario, which would never happen. But driving to that point is, I get it, and I totally understand it. Uh, great. 
So the let's discuss it a little bit. Okay. What's your first? This is you read through. I, I sent you a message. I'm like, hey, we got something to talk about tomorrow. You did, and then I didn't really read any of this. Um, I did. I did catch up on Discord and and sort of. Uh, I know enough about it to get through the rest of this podcast. Um, <laughs> well, and this is all. Discussion I mean, I think here. I think one of the big questions that uh, was kind of thrown out on the Discord was, are they making the nodes transferable as part of this proposal? In which case, major node holder owners could play the system to a degree, but that's probably going to get policed out fairly quickly. You know, if I have, say, a couple of hundred founders nodes, and uh -huh. all of a sudden mm -hmm. I put them each into their own individual Correct. Gala account. Right. Right. They, I know Gala internally tracks connected accounts. Mm -hmm. And so, are they going it's to easy police to, that? It's to easy say? to make an account that's, that's not connected, though. Like uh, outside of but that node, but once you node transfer the there. node, if the node was there, then they're they're, they're already flagging that and saying, right. okay, well that node went there, right? And now those two those two accounts are either in, uh, related for long term, or they were related in this one particular transaction. One way or the other, yeah. One way or the other, yeah. Then it does not take much, and you probably have the technology and the software already to say, well, where is all the gala that's being generated by those nodes going? And right. so you're not going to be doing it, you know, if you have 200 nodes, you're not doing it, each one of those is going to be one single account, doing to a distribution account, getting converted into whatever. Yeah. Well, or staying as gala, which I think is part of the honor system. And the so that's, point, right? so your first initial thought was mine as well. Like, okay, so we're going to implement this, this honor system to where you're running a node, but you can't take any of the rewards out. Otherwise, you get dinged, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, you we want to keep it in the system. Two things. One, okay, great. Well, if I'm a large node owner and I know I'm already going to get hit with this proposal that goes through, I want to, I need to maximize my, um, you know, my investment because that's what well, it is. I and I need to be able to. Investment, running nodes has an overhead. Uh, 100%, and right? And so, you know, the reward structure for running the node is net of the overhead of maintaining the node yeah. itself. Yeah. And even if you went on AWS and you went down to the minimum specs, you're still talking 30 bucks a month. Yeah. Um, per node minimum. Yeah. I mean, on Vulture, you might be able to get it a little bit less. Which Nerd Node is only 25, so that's pretty cheap. Yeah. You're great. <laughs> we love nerd node i'm just saying for the for the general community i mean they could yeah. all come to nerd node and sure enough come on an extra five bucks a month because they're not paying 30 to that come on in but yes but they get they're going to get dinged by taking money out to be able to pay this to pay service thing fee. right so that does not make perfect sense that, agree that is, but it is moving them in the direction of what they want right they want somebody to run it on their own individual team uh their own individual machine in their own individual house because even still when you go to AWS, overhead. even whether, when, it, whether it's AWS or not, I agree. It still has an overhead. I agree, but it's way less overhead than it is through AWS. You, I mean, the the nodes don't take anything. Dude. You can run it in the background; it doesn't do crap. Well, you can, but I'm talking about you know these people who are True. who are buying these nodes and thinking, well, this is a maybe they shouldn't have nodes then. Potentially not. Yeah, it doesn't seem very decentralized, though, does it? it well, like I mean, there's like... still there's still enough people out there. You know, you sift through them, you can find enough people that can run it on their own their own machine at home. Look, think, I'm that arguing wasn't the point when they started. Oh, I the point was definitely to have the small guy benefit from the. I'm trying to argue the other and... side. I'm a, I'm a large node owner. Mm -hmm. People know that I, I I have a lot of notes, so I am vested in this vote, right. as I am in every vote that comes through. So. I'm just trying to argue and look at the other side as well and not and not immediately vilify what they're doing to make it look like it's just for their own benefit. Right. right? I, I love the idea of a decentralized network. And what and if I believe that Gala is going to be doing good things, why wouldn't I want them to have a decentralized network? One, what does their node do? Um up until recently, it just pinged another server and said, I'm online. Yeah. Well, what does it do recently? Um, great question. Don't know. The same thing. That's what I'm 
yeah. So I might have missed something in the last couple of months. No, 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 <laughs> you didn't. Where so, it was actually doing something, but right now yeah. it's just a heartbeat, right? Just a ping, ping, it's, ping. I mean, it's line, a little line, more line, than line. a heartbeat. There's, there's like the like green nodes are a heartbeat, right? They're right. literally just heartbeat, but and there's a little bit more to it. But, but then I mean, the music nodes and the they're, film nodes they actually do do something, and ultimately, and then spider tax nodes do something. Music takes a ton of a ton of. Uh, um, resources, mm -hmm. um, spider tank nodes, they allow people to have, they actually don't do anything in the fact that they're just getting rewarded for having a node. So they get drop pods. So the node doesn't still doesn't do anything. But uh, the, the actual NFT for like the base and stuff has to be hosted on a node, right? No, no, just it, it's pinging the account that the nodes in yeah. and saying that exists. Yep. So it's yep. all database so it's, it's all database really... sure. they're they're web two dude they're they're not web three yet like no. and are they going to get there i don't know um but going back to the decentralization side right like these first off these nodes don't they don't do anything right so decentralizing the network what does that do for you nothing what does it matter that has nothing to do there until you actually create a node that is doing something besides just distributing gala Right now, so and if it's just where distributing did this Gala, proposal come from? Did this come from Gala directly, or did yes. it come from a community based? No, nope. Gala directly. Yeah, they've been doing a. They're actually Brink's been doing his little AMA thing right now on Gala. Right. So most people are probably listening to that and not this, which is fine. Which is fine. Like uh, this is being recorded. They can watch this. Oh video. yeah, yeah. It'll this will come out and be on. It's just very interesting to me, is like because this is what the fourth, fifth iteration of the node structure proposal right um uh, i mean over it's been years. quite a few yeah there's there's been quite coming a few coming back to where is this how is this distribution meant to be going how are we dialing it in right cuz uh, when we first started when we first got in a long time ago it was we were getting 25% and god was getting 75% right. of this distribution then they switched it to a 50-50 and that wasn't a vote they just said here we're going to make it 50-50 and then it went back to like 25, 25, 75 or something like that. Then there was a node vote that went to some stuff to make it 50, 50 mm -hmm. again. And then they talked about making a bonus pool and then a whole bunch of other things that have gone down. Well, none of those votes have actually been implemented. And they... Despite having been voted for by the community or... Correct. Right. So what those... They shouldn't even be called node votes. They should just be called, um, you know, a, um, a community so. feeling. Uh-huh. How does the no community feel about this proposal, right? Because they're all just proposals. And it's not like anything goes through. And even with uh, other votes, when you start talking about games and stuff, you know, they've came out and said, oh, if you vote no on this, well, we're just going to push it through. Mm -hmm. um, there was, I can't remember the name of it, but they there was one game that got voted no on and it, and it got pushed. Uh, um, it's, no, no, no. It was, uh, it was like this weird, like emotional game you go through, like, I don't even remember. It's probably why I voted no on it. And then, uh, but they they pushed it through because they sold NFTs for it or NFTs somewhere. But town. node owners didn't get the drop for it because they voted no on it. Is it Town Crush? No, no, no. Uh, it's it's like it's none of the games that you actually see on the actual Gala game site. Is it Meow Match? <laughs> I only wish. <laughs> so, so again, so decentralization. Now, uh, can we go to the sheet, Blake? Yeah. So when we look at decentralizing the actual if that's their first and foremost they keep talking about decentralizing the network okay so first off why do you need a decentralized network we already covered it they don't do shit anyway right now so you know decentralize it before it does stuff great i understand that so if you look at sample data uh blake has highlighted the the, the top 40 accounts right now you know actually do uh how many total nodes are in the top 40 accounts right there i wonder if i can do uh I wonder if I have the ability to do um just just this. highlight it and it'll tell you the number. Yeah. What is that? 18,200 essentially. So it's about yeah. So out of the total amount of nodes out there, that's 36% of the total nodes. Now, that's not that's total nodes less ones that are to be sold through Gala, right? There's 36,000 that have been sold. Something like that, correct. So that's fifty. It's over fifty percent. So half of the nodes that are owned by people are in the top forty. 
now it's even more concentrated when you look at the top two, right? Obviously, we know Eric Schumeyer is the top one. Most likely, Wright is the number two one. Uh, that's 14,000 nodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just shy. 30% of the total nodes. Actually, it's probably 40% of the total nodes that are out there. So they're, they're already getting 40% of the distribution now that they're running their nodes. Right. Wright just turned his on recently after the last little uh, node uh, or the V2 update. Who knows what's going on there? Um, so, okay. We want to decentralize that. Well, those are the first two accounts that you need to decentralize and you have direct yeah. contact with those people because they're internal to Gala. So what is their thoughts on this, on moving this forward? One, and then how are you going to get them to move their nodes? Well, you have to make them into NFTs. Correct. So that's the first thing you should do, right? Turn them into NFTs so that way... Or they could do the right thing and just take them all offline and let them sit there. Was there a pun pun intended there? The right thing? They don't need to be running these. They both make quite a lot of money already. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. True. Very true. Um, But I, I, I will argue that they are founders of a company and they have all rights to do that. And, you know, by all means, do it. So, but... You know, how do you get those out of their hands? That should be the first and foremost. I mean, uh, I'm in that. When we look at top 40s, I'm in there a couple times. So I have a vested interest in the top 40. Yeah, so I get it. Do you want me to decentralize my nodes? Great. Well, then incentivize me to decentralize my node, Mm. right? If that's your true, if that's your true purpose, then incentivize me to decentralize mo- my node. Don't, mm-hmm. don't. Um, I mean, I've been here for the long run. I've invested millions into Gala. Yeah, absolutely. Put millions of dollars into Gala. So why am I getting hurt punished. or yeah. punished? If you want to, de- I fully support decentralization. Don't punish me. That's no, the difference between technology. Help me technology do it. Dis- technologically dis- decentralizing right yeah it's like i yes i know how nerd node runs their nodes right i know how a lot of these people probably run their nodes yes and they're on single boxes and they're being rotated and they're doing mm-hmm. everything they've optimized for distribution instead of optimized for decentralization like i used to run a lot of these nodes in a very decentralized way all around the world you know yeah. uh, and they were in data centers for aws in africa and yep. across europe that's technologically decentralized. So you're getting, ish. If, if they did anything, ish, ish, if they did anything, they would, you know, there is some optimization there in mm-hmm. terms of somebody from wherever yeah. is pinging the closest node and it's not in LA, right? It's not yeah. in Oregon, it's yep. in a country very close to them. And, right. And there's a performance boost there. But the reward structure for that is meaningless, I think. If, if there's nothing that the node's actually doing in the first place, or if they're actual, if it's still uh, there's a, there's an concentrated at the top, right? Well, so you have two different risk as well with this is if you, if you suddenly had 50,000 nodes and they're all being run by 50,000 separate people, and um, you know, you need those 50,000 nodes online, you decentralize them, they're not making any money or they're not making enough money to be interesting. People just don't give a shit and they turn them off. Yeah. All, yeah. Of, all of a sudden, you're down to 10,000 nodes. Yeah. Hey Blake, network that needs fifty thousand nodes to operate. Make sure you're looking at the comments too, and like if there's stuff that we need to we need to address, like just kind of post it on the bottom so we can yeah. look at it. So I'm not trying to look at this screen, so I can give Michael my full attention. Yeah, I'll let you know. So there's two the two decentralizations, right? There's the technological decentralization, and then there's the ownership or the personal like uh, ownership it's, it's the of benefit, the nodes. The benefit throughput decentralization Correct. which you know this seems like this is coming from a place of well in order to look good we want as many people to benefit from the business that we've built and the network we've built mm-hmm. but realistically nobody's going to benefit from it if it isn't there Correct. and you suddenly force people to have one node per account yeah in order to maximize their points yeah and then we sell them because they've been tokenized <laughs> <laughs> and they just don't come back online when yeah. all of a sudden i would like to know and i don't know um but i would like to know where the structure from this proposal came from internal 
Right. But my point is, I don't necessarily believe that it was organic in that. I think that it's probably taken from another net, another chain's basis. And I'm pointing at Ethereum probably, or yeah. potentially Solana. Yeah. You know, they're trying to normalize the Gala chain to some other mm -hmm. big... Uh, of course, they're going to look at all the other chains yeah. that are out there that what are they doing right and what are they doing wrong so they can implement on their chain. And again, decentralize it. But don't don't hurt the people. Incentivize them to decentralize it. Mm -hmm. Right, right and now... again, there's two different parts to decentralizing it. Yeah, the yeah. technological decentralization Correct. and then there's the reward structure and the benefit of, of maintaining the network. Correct. Decentralization. And I think you're only de-motivating uh, anybody in this top 40 to do anything at this point. If right. they're saying, okay, well, we've, we've, we're done giving you guys all the props and, yep. and you guys benefiting from all your investment yep. in this network. Um, so you can, we don't care. We only got here because of you, but well, yeah. we don't care anymore. Yeah. Um, and then there's the technological part, which is, Okay, if we can clock that you have two two nodes running on one box, give me a logarithmic ding on it, right? Yeah. But if, if you have 500 nodes and you're running them on 500 different servers globally, mm -hmm. that is technologically decentralized. Technologically, but I, I can understand wanting it to be out of the hands of one entity because, again, let's look at the top two, right? So what are they going to do? Like you said, they have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They don't need this distribution that they're getting from Gala. So they can sit on that forever and accumulate their points for as long as they need to and get that bonus pool forever. Mm -hmm. Right. The people that are running one node, right, or five nodes, they probably need that money. Yeah. Or they want that money to be able, or they need to use it to pay for a VM, that kind of stuff. So you need to incentivize the person as well to offload the amount of nodes that they have or reduce that amount. So there has to be some sort of reason. And that's their, that's the penalty that they're putting into play, right? They're penalizing instead of rewarding. The it's, the it's already so broken that there's no way to get oh. back from it. It's like, I know guys who are paying a hundred thousand dollars for the, for these nodes. <clears throat> they make it on a token. I doubt their floor price is much over three. Well, uh, distribution went up four times last night still is not going to affect the anybody i, I would anybody tell you right now if it, set, who already bought early nodes yes. has already ROI'd out Ag it. agreed and so offloading a uh, uh, an nft gala node at three thousand dollars is not going to be the top two i can guarantee you. i i agree with that well they're not selling anyway unless they're unless there's something internal that's mm -hmm. going to get them to get rid of their nodes or move their nodes out they're they're not leaving they're going to sit there because one yeah. they have their own little beef that's going on so they're they're going to they're going to fight to who's going to get more rewards and distribution between the two of them um the the idea that well let's go back to the price because right now um i think what was the distribution 480 something like that yeah Perhaps. i thought it was like 489 or 498 or something like that so you're making 1176 a day per note, so, per note. so right now if you're doing a a, a one-year ROI. Oh, I did I say the bad word ROI. My bad. Uh, it's forty three hundred bucks, basically. So at current price, current distribution, it's forty three hundred dollars that that earns in a year. I think you could safely bet that people will pay eight grand to ten grand for that node right now. If they were NFTs with that distribution, you could see people paying that. Whether they should or not, it's a whole different story. Um, I. I and I think you'll see that four floor price be around that eight to ten grand. Well, it's classic economics, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. demand, oh. And, demand and supply. Hundred right? percent. Like... But guess who's not going to sell that? The guy that bought it for ninety grand, or he might because he's like, I just need to take a loss and get out of here because he's so disappointed yeah. with or it. Or he bought him. You know, maybe they ROI'd out already on them. Hundred yeah. percent. Like people we know that have bought early on. Mm -hmm. You know, for a thousand bucks. Yeah. Five hundred bucks, whatever it was. Fifteen hundred. Yeah, two, I mean, they two, three, four, whatever, and yeah. they've made enough throughout that they've they've already made their money. Now it's time they now sell it's just it. Annoying, and then they're out. So especially when you start talking about having to deal with the honor system that goes into play, mm -hmm. right? The honor system really like de incentivizes anybody wanting this note if they're truly looking into what happens with this 
this system, you have to one of two things, either not do your research or just truly love the idea of their network and are excited for the network and just want to be a part of that network. Look, that's why I got into it in the first place. I wasn't earning shit when I was running nodes. Neither were you. They were worth nothing. We got into it because we believed in the network, like what it was going to do. So that's why I got in. Was it worth anything? At that point in time, as it started to grow, then I got excited. Then I bought more. Mm -hmm. Then I bought a lot more. So, But when I first got in, it was all about the network. Support the network. Support our friend, mm -hmm. uh, Mike McCarthy, and, and what they were doing. Yeah, and Friends up that the, were all here. That yeah, were all yeah. part of what they were doing and building. And I only knew Mark, Mike McCarthy at the time. So now I know a whole lot more. Yeah. And there's so. a whole bunch of them. And, and a lot of them are right here yeah. where we live. Which so. is interesting. Yeah, it is. Well, the genesis of the entire company kind of yeah. was here. And then born. Boink. Born here. That's why we should call this blockchain. Blockchain Valley? Blockchain, blockchain. What do we call it? Web3 something? I don't know. Yeah, it's probably like Blockchain Valley. A couple of years ago, we tried that, and then it didn't really stick. So, And also, people left. Um, okay, well... Yeah, I don't know what the future. Uh, do you, uh, well, is this going to go through? I mean, is it one node per? Account? So, is it one vote per account, or is it one vote per node? It's one vote per node, um, and it's the vote. They're going to try to put the vote live. They're going to keep the discussion open this week mm -hmm. and see what gets fleshed out with certain things. So, there's a few things that one I want to get an article written from Forge and Crypto. I want to push out some ideas that I have. Like one is instead of penalizing the node owners, if you really want to decentralize it you should give them a re, you know give them incentivization to move their nodes mm -hmm. instead and if that's truly the case instead Again, of penalizing because the highest ones if you're going to penal they don't care they're going to sit on their nodes forever yeah but all again, those like, people what, what is the actual purpose of of this is it the technological decentralization distribution of the node network in order to make it a robust global network or is it to penalize some of these bigger whales right that have a lot of nodes and have had them for a long time and, and the company was built on the back of yes and so i mean my idea is and they've talked about this a lot is that there's people that take advantage like they've always talked about the people that take advantage of the network that all they do is take their money out and they sell it they've always been wanting to get rid of those people the roy boys mm -hmm. that's all they're there for so my thought process, because the one thing that was just slipped in there was the honor system. Uh -huh. It's all built around decentralizing the network, but then there's the honor system in there. Is that it's, it's really about the honor system because we all know Gala sells their Gala, mm -hmm. right? They have to. They have to to pay bills, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we can get into semantics of should they have that high of bills or not. I, you know, that's, it, it is what it is. That's what they're running the company and they have to pay their bills to run their company. Well, you know, the node owners helped fund the company going forward, mm -hmm. right? No people that bought nodes, people that bought NFTs, people that bought that stuff to help move the company forward. But now we're penalizing those those same people that put the money into the network to grow it to where it's at. You're not mm -hmm. anywhere where you're at without them, without any of them. Now and it we're was not penalized. sold as an altruistic. Hell no. It was not sold. Hell no. At the time of like, hey, we need a hundred grand for you from you for this node. Yeah. Um. And yes, they do say, you know, they escape it from the SEC point of view and the Roy Boy kind of conversation or whatever. But yeah. they didn't say, hey, you can get a tax break if you give us this money because we're trying to build this blah, blah, blah. Exactly. It wasn't. And nobody's doing anything without some personal um, vested interest in it. And I guarantee you there are not 50,000 gamers out there who just want to run a node so that they can make sure that. For 100 grand. For 100 grand. Um, no. So that spider tanks can run slowly. No. No, and so in reality, I think that's what a lot of it was hit, was put in for was for this K, not KYC, because he came out and said that KYC is probably not going to be a thing, actually. So, right. But it is the idea that they need to control the outflow of Gala so they can have the majority of liquidity that's coming out. Because they have to pay their bills and they have a, such a large overhead. Whether the whether they should or not, that's the besides the point. I'm just saying they do have a large overhead. They have to pay that, and they're using Gala to do that. And we see them we see them uh, mint it and send it to Binance frequently, like a lot. So we know that that's there. And there's mm -hmm. you know OTC trades that are happening. I think through like Gen, uh, Gen uh, Gemini and things like that. But yeah, uh, HB. Nobody's running a charity here. I agree. Nobody's doing that for free. Like the thing for me is I use 
uh, the majority of my nodes, we use that distribution. I pay payroll. Mm-hmm. I'm paying payroll because I'm building stuff. I'm building nerd node to literally support your decentralization idea of a network. Yep. Mm-hmm. But in, in the fact that I'm going to have to one, either wait a long time. Like I'm going to have to take all my nodes and somehow, you know, give them to people to run potentially somehow move them out or sell them and then fund it from there. But again, it's, it's just a weird one. Again, I, I don't think it needs to be. Uh, I mean, what, what, what do we think is the per- percentage chance that this proposal as is goes through on a node, on a node vote? It's probably pretty low. I would say if we look at the amount of votes that are at the top now, if, if those top two vote, yes, you know, there's an ul- ulterior motive. So you see 14,000 yeah. votes come through that are yes. You know there's an the ulterior motive outside of that because they, uh, in theory, are going to get hit the most. But again, they don't need the money. The rest of those nodes that are up there on that screen, when you look at them, they're going to vote no on that. because well, What, they what get would be the ulterior hard. motive? And the ulterior motive is probably to push through the tokenization of the nodes so they can offload those nodes. Rather than run them, right? But why? Running them but why not do not that? Running them for the benefit of Gala. They're but why not do that time. first instead of implementing implementing this this whole bonus pool situation? Why I not? It, I think it's to stabilize the economics on it. Like we just went through it, where you're like, well, here's forty seven hundred bucks a month a year, so therefore we can assume that somebody would pay eight thousand dollars for his notes. Because if they don't stabilize the economics on it to the point where that is a very very blanket open, it's stable now because oh, you know right. what the distribution is. Right now, it's actually more stable than if you implement this bonus right. pool. But it's not as valuable because if they just forex the distribution Correct. on each node, then suddenly they are, can sustain an eight thousand dollar price tag. Where previously they that's why you really NFT it now. That's why you N- that's why you dollars. NFT it now because the moment you go the other route, right? I think it's as in putting in the bonus pool and the the value goes right now. There's no penalty for taking Gal out. Right. The moment you go to the bonus pool with the penalty that goes into play, it devalues the node because now you're running a node, but you can't take it all out. Mm-hmm. You get penalized. So you don't get as much uh, as much of a distribution. Yeah, future future value, future present value is also considered though, right? Because ultimately, if you're if they're pen- penalizing you for taking it out, is because there is some economic purpose for maintaining the goal within the within the system, which will eventually make the per token price greater hopefully but there's right. still sell pressure from outside sources that aren't these people like the majority of the gala that gets sold that's through gala i mean they sell the majority out of anybody that's out there mm. so they're the one that's putting the sell pressure they're they have it they have the reason that it's, it's down i mean I, I can't say that Wait, they're not crypto, the reason winter, crypto's yeah, down yeah, crypto, everything's yeah, down yeah, everybody's selling decouple from the market in any way yeah. or it went down at the same right, rate as everybody right. else did that it was a false statement on my end it's not just their reason there's so much stuff that's going on there yeah. so but um right so going back to the point which is if one and two or on this chart two and three um vote yes then yeah then we can assume that something else is hundred percent from hundred percent for this proposal. Yeah, because it, it benefits them zero amount, mm. Mm. zero. Now, if it was tied to the NFT side, and then they kind of pushed it through to where like, ooh, there's you're going to get an NFT with it and to be able to sell it as well, and no KYC. The other here's the other issue. The whole NFT proposal. Did you read that? I did not. Well, and I don't think it was actually in the proposal. I think this was all after the fact and some mentions with, um, I think Brink mentioned it, it's that there was going to be a, about it. so you were going to have to pay a fee to, to Gala. You know, if you sold it on OpenSea or whatever it is, right. you're going to pay that 10% fee. But some people are saying that they were going to make it a 50% fee. And then you have to pay to mint it to Gala. So you have to take the NFT, mint it to Gala, it can't run, by the way. So if you have to have somebody that's going to buy it first and foremost before you actually do that, otherwise you're not getting distributions because you can't run the node if it's not on the Geary chain. Right. Or it's Gala chain now. Uh, 
so they're so they're making it even more difficult for these people to sell it. So again, they're they're de-incentivizing the decentralization of the node. So they they by implementing that stuff, they are actually de-incentivizing me to sell it. Right? Or am I missing something? I didn't read the proposal, so I can't say if you're missing something or not. <laughs> I'm never missing anything. I, I don't think so. Yeah. No, Jesse, I don't I don't think you can actually see who votes, but usually if you're following it, you can see massive votes because when votes go through, you can select how many votes do you want to do here? Mm -hmm. And if you see all of a sudden like 7,000 7, votes go through, you know it was there. Now, are they going to make it sit, have pay somebody to sit there and go one vote, one vote, Doesn't it one actually, vote? It does say number of percentage of nodes voted doesn't it uh nodes but not node owners let me see if i can pull it up on my screen real quick um and then i'll have blake i'll have you share well, there isn't there isn't an, uh, an open vote though, is there, so. well it shows the past it shows the past votes yeah but what i'm i think what jesse's asking is during the voting process can you see it don't share my screen blake <laughs> 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 don't share my screen it's the wrong one that's on there i don't want people seeing that one Yes, I'm dirty pulled up. I don't probably. want to see that I own seven thousand. I mean, I mean, just yep. Then oh, oh, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, so you completed polls. Um, it shows the so the last vote. Here's the funny one. So the last vote got five thousand votes. Five thousand. What was it for? That was for should the emissions of Gala be revised to account for total supply. This is their other one, this is their total supply, because they write total with the lowercase t and then supply as an uppercase s. U, P. They're trying to coin their own total supply because of the way they're doing their burn and or their, in quotations, their burn. Burn. Because uh, it's not a true burn. Anyways, so the one before that was 13,000 should founders nodes license have the option to be converted to NFTs. It was a resounding yes. The one before that was 6,500. Should Founders Nodes implement a system of organizational approvals for game publishers? Yes. So, again, uh, July to, is the having taken place this month. Should the Founders Nodes, uh, Founders Node distribution, should the Founders Node distribution? Uh, oh, it says continue with a 50 50 split. It went to no, it was actually a no vote. It went to add a bonus pool to the right. distribution, creating a 25 25 50. Distribution of all Gala distribution. So, which that proposal's been around for a bit, right? That was from last July. Yeah. That was last year. So, this is the 25, 25, 50, right? So, right now, that 50 is the bonus pool, supposedly. But again, we're not, we get such, it's a new proposal every time. Does this include this last vote? Or now are we changing that again? So um, there needs to be so much more information that, that they, that they do. And they're trying to answer the questions. The problem is, is, they almost need a committee that can talk with Brink. Instead of like 9 million community members, you take a community a committee of you know five or seven people mm -hmm. that can go in and listen to the community, get the main questions that are answered that want to be answered. They put it together. Then they go in and they have they do a little AMA roundtable. That would be a little bit better of it. So um, June 20, you actually can share my screen, Blake. It's not um, showing all, it's, I'm not showing all my nodes on there. So right now it's just your charts, is what I'm seeing on it. Oh, I have to migrate tabs. I'll do that real quick. Are you watching Brinks AMA in the background, Blake? No, I was I was listening to it a little bit earlier, but it was I was trying to, but it was a little too distracting trying to keep up with right. both. He had one posted on. He posted an explainer video that was like nine minutes long on Twitter as well earlier to this morning. So there you go. So these are the votes. Um, again, this was this was the last one. So again, if we see a massive, this was the largest one. Should they be NFTs? You had twelve thousand, mm -hmm. and and this was April. This was before Wright had his nodes online, and you don't. I don't think you have to have your nodes online to vote. To be honest. But again, if Eric or him vote, that's 14,000 votes. Yeah. You know, between the two of them, or 7,000 with one if they end up voting. So it'll be curious to see what that vote count is. Obviously, a resounding amount of node owners voted or nodes voted. Is there not an unsaid rule where Wright and Eric don't vote in these things? I don't, I have never seen it ever put out. 
I've never heard it actually said. Like a massive conflict of interest. Oh, please. They own, I mean, they're running between the two of them. They are the owners of the company and they're running 50% of the active notes. If they do vote. I agree. That's, that's what I'm saying is I think that they're actually both smart enough to see how farcical that would be is ultimately. Uh, and I know they've got beef and whatever, but. Um, but let me put it this way. If they do vote, there's a reason. There's, and it's nothing that has to do with what's going on. In but the I think front if end. they do vote, then the farcical nature of it all Agreed. becomes quite, you know, you're pulling the curtain yeah. back and saying, well, decentralized, schmish <laughs> Yeah. What a fucking bunch of bullshit, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, so yeah. the interesting part will be to see if they don't vote, I pretty much would say that this is going to be a no vote all the way through mm -hmm. until you can flesh it out to make it a little bit better for those heavier node owners. And are you, to are be you putting together an effort to put a counter proposal together? Yeah, hundred percent. I want to. I want to look at that like that medium article you're talking about. Yeah, a medium article that'll have some suggestions. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, talk with Brink. I'll send it to Brink as well. I mean, um, obviously, I've have a massive. Oh, is that the one you were talking about, Eternal Paradox? No, it wasn't Eternal Paradox. Um, let's see. Uh, this game's faster. No, no. The Superior Legends Reborn. Betwixt. Betwixt. Oh, it did get a yes vote. I thought it got a no vote. Should Betwixt be funded 1 million USD from Gala Games 100 million game development fund? Uh, I, I thought that was the one that I thought got a no vote. They said that they were going to push it through regardless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. they've maybe, said it multiple maybe times. Maybe they used some of their nodes to vote to push it through so who knows i mean look at there's only 5400 votes on that uh -huh. one anyway of which 285 of them abstained abstainations abstinence abstinence <laughs> uh, i don't know um but I, I mean i guess we got a lot a lot of stuff that's uh you know, to to talk about still, I'll, we'll put together a medium article. We'll, um, I, I definitely want to talk with some community members of different ideas as well, because I think it's getting lost in the shuffle over in Gala with a lot of the ideas right. itself. So, and again, that's why I say you almost need a community. You need a community that's focused literally on that thing. Like, okay, it's hell. Let's have the node owners vote on six, you know, people to be a part of this, like the, community mm -hmm. uh round table per se to be able to then present to gala um i know i've i've uh coordinated with and i you know lasagna and um jay from uh what's the he's doing the the kind of the crm system for the gaming side um a couple of those guys just kind of collaborating with them on that same idea of bringing it together but if i feel like it's running into the same problem that i had when I was trying to put the DAO together is you get a couple of people that are excited and want to start it, but there's not enough people that are excited to put the effort in to move it forward. Right. Like, right. It, or they're just bit, everybody's busy doing their own thing. Unless you have somebody that's dedicated for, you know, that's their job to continue to, you know, touch on people and push it forward. It's, it's going to be a hard one to get through. That's, that's the, the problem that I ran into. So uh, let's see here. Anything else? What's the anybody else asking questions on the Gala stuff that we should address here? Uh, someone said, wasn't it faster? No, nah, it was betwixt. It was betwixt. Was I was thinking of faster? Ended up it got passed through, but then it got kicked out because they were their development wasn't up to speed with where they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was that was more recent than not. And betwixt was the one I was thinking of. I thought people voted no on that, but apparently not. I was wrong. So. But, so but let's look at this. Let's see. Um, let's move on to something a little bit more exciting. Okay. What is it? Well, you know, when you come into this chair, you have to have your DJ oh, pick. Okay. You, bonk. Bonk. <laughs> it's bonk again. It's, I'm just I'm going to try and. Uh, yeah. It's bonk. I'm going to hustle bonk into being an actual coin. Oh gosh, I, I don't know why Splinterlands all of a sudden popping up five percent. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Um, Maybe uh, Blake, you can pull up Coin Gecko, and uh, once you get some stuff up there, like Bonk <laughs> Splinterlands. I mean, Splinterlands. A lot of people like it, like the system. Um, I know Glitch Through 
he keeps telling me to get in on some of their stuff and I keep forgetting to. I own some SPS. Um, I own some SPS. More than I want to own, but uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I own some SPS that I paid a lot more money for than it's worth. <laughs> I don't know if we can. Yeah, may or may not. Uh, Sui. Sui's a, that's doing well, nothing. much to the chagrin of Jake, this is going to, I'm going to do some charts here because, you know, I like charts and I'm curious to see what things look like. Um, oh, did you pull it up? You got bonk up. <laughs> bonk. <laughs> go to the max. Uh, if you go down to the, yeah. <laughs> hey, it looks like every other shit coin out there. Yep. That's a nice accumulation. I mean, there's so uh, many, so many coins right now that are that are in that same area of accumulation. Of you know, it's time to time to get them going. Time to get that stuff uh, well, on board. That season's gone, right? Isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. What season? Shitcoin, shitcoin season? season? No, no, this is when you accumulate the shitcoins, dude. This is the time where you say, "I'm going to put two hundred dollars in shib, and then sell it for a whole lot more," and you know. Eight to nine months. Eight this, to nine months. This is the this is the you take your you take your bankroll. This is not financial advice. You take the bankroll. <laughs> take bankroll. Uh, say you have you. I'm gonna take myself for example. I have I have a hundred dollars. Well, I'm gonna be safe with fifty percent of that, and I'm gonna put fifty percent of that into Bitcoin and Ethereum because those are the those are the two that most likely are gonna be safe and sound. Then I'm gonna take. 25 the you know 25 percent and i'm going to put that into kind of your mid tiers like your souls your avax your um anything top 25 yep. to top 50 i could I would say would kind of fit in that in the market cap something that you that you've done research on or you know been around for a while they're building stuff they're actually there and you take that 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 25 percent you put in there now you have 25 percent left over now you take 20% of that and you put that into your you know they're still on a market cap but they're you know 100 to 300 right they're still they're still in that range of like they might do something and i'm not saying randomly you got to do research man right you got to figure it out what's out there and you and and then and you have that kind of distributed there and then you take that last 5% and you put it in bulk <laughs> no, then you put you choose bonk and you choose a whole bunch of other ones, like twenty of them. Yeah, and you just put 10, 15 bucks in. Yeah, and, you, whatever, and whatever, however much is left into all the rest yeah. of those, and and then you just wait just for one of those that. suckers to hit, then go crazy, and then. Do you know I've always appreciated your trading strategy because it's built on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's the sad part: that is not how I do mine. Oh, no, that's I I go like this. I'm like, oh, I like that chart. Let's put all my money into that one. And then I right now. Oh, good. I mine, made some money. Mine is still from, from five years ago where it was that strategy, which is I've got some in some stuff that I trust, and then some in some stuff that just is I might as well go to a casino and throw it yeah. on well, the floor. I mean, my my actual philosophy is um if you're trying to distrib distribute your um investments, um what do they call that? Um when you're putting in a bunch of different stuff. I'm diversifying. Thank you. Diversification is the path to mediocrity, right? Yep. That's that's my theory I play on. I don't want to be that. You've proved that out to me over the last couple of years. So so I personally find high conviction and I don't want to be in the majority of my investments more than five tokens. That's me personally. And it's and in all honesty, I don't suggest anybody doing this at all. Please don't do this. Because you, because, important. well, there's a couple of things that one, when I say I put it into five tokens, I don't just go to YouTube and listen to um, Bob saying, Hey, you know, bonk is great. It's going to be the next biggest thing. You should invest in bonk. I do actually my own research. Like I actually, I mean, hell mm -hmm. we've Blake and I sit back and we'll go through tokenomics. We'll go through who yep. the team is. We'll go through, you know, uh, what was it? Two summers ago, Blake, that uh, or was it last summer. I don't know how many summers it's been. Feels like you've been working with me forever. Um, yeah, it would have been last summer. Because we had and we had um, you with the other interns, and that was the first thing that we talked about. It was like, okay, we need to. These are the things that I look for, 
and we need to pull these tokens. We need to pull these companies out and see why I like them, right? I mean, the most recent, I mean, pretty heavy bet that I just did wasn't even in the crypto market. It was in the legacy market, and it was this bad boy right here. Coinbase, huh? Right. So for me, Coinbase was a, well, one, all the ETFs were coming through. Well, we're not coming through, but they're, everybody, all the big boys are putting their ETF in. You know, BlackRock's got a great record. There's a lot of positivity going in that direction that there's probably going to be a spot ETF sooner rather than later, um, which is great. And then a lot of them named Coinbase as their Coinbase custody as their custodial. Right. That's huge. So a lot of money going to Coinbase. Then, uh, so that was the fundamental side of, and you know, just being in the bear market, we're going to, you know, be coming out of that soon. I feel like we've already seen the bottom, like, uh, you know, this is, you know, we got another year and a half of, you know, sideways and then up. And so what do I look for? I look for other, other things that are going to be affected and not necessarily just in crypto. So Coinbase mm -hmm. is one of those, especially when you start talking about all these other exchanges being, you know, closed down. It's the, it's the you know, go to exchange in the U S yeah. So, so then I charted and what I see, I saw some massive volume and accumulation in this, you know, lower range in that $60 range. And the pattern itself is an inverse head and shoulders. It broke out of the downward trend and oh, lo and behold, it's with all the news that's going out. So for me, this is a no brainer. Now this is a weekly one. So uh, as I was telling a young Padawan this morning is weekly, you know, if you're on the weekly, your trade is going to be months to years. Okay. So the, you're not trading this and saying, Oh, this is going to go up tomorrow to a million. No, it's, it's a month to years type of trade. So I traded a couple of leaps, mm -hmm. which I'm not an options trader. I was just like, this is long term. So I took one out that was uh, oh, a little less than a year. And then one that was a little over a year. I didn't have enough money in there. I wanted more money to buy more. I was super Looks convicted. Like super convicted. I know. I'm paying for drinks next time. Nice. We're good. Okay. So you can pay for golf. Yeah, done. Um, but but yeah. So I like to coin. I still like coin. I like coin for a long term. So well, I mean, they're just. I mean, they're crypto adjacent number one. So it's only half a step away from <laughs> your day to day. But also, they are the ones who are set to benefit most from you know increased regulation. Yep, because they are the people at the table having the conversation, and they're the ones who are driving some of those regulations, and they're they're doing it in a in a interesting manner, actually, in an interesting manner. <laughs> um, but you know, they will also benefit because some of their competitors will slide away. Hundred percent, hundred percent. They're just weirdly how that all plays out. Yeah, right. It's weirdly how th this whole it's all narrative driven, man, and it. it, it it just always proves the fact that this whole market, not just crypto, legacy markets are completely manipulated. Yep. Well, let's look at this case. And we're just talking about right now with Coinbase. Like how many lawsuits did the SEC? They were dropping all sorts of stuff, you know, uh, Kraken got, they paid a $30 million fine early on in the year. And then they sued Binance. They sued Coinbase, the next two top exchanges in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is this whole hubbub and to do, oh, my God, crypto is going to be dead in the U.S. Like, it's going to be dead. Well, then let me ask you this. Why in the literal fuck would every one of those ETFs, this is just a couple of weeks after all that mm -hmm. stuff went down, put Coinbase custody as the who they're going to use as a custodial? I straight up called it when they when they, <laughs> when they filed the freaking thing. I said. This is nothing to do with, yeah. with this is not punitive. This yeah. is come to the table. Let's talk. Let's get this regulated properly. Let's make rules that benefit the people who make rules the best. Yeah. And yeah. who are best able to benefit from legitimizing some of this stuff, which the general public needs to see the SEC doing something. So they sue yeah. them. But then Ultimately, the outcome is, hey, we figured out Coinbase is pretty legit. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> you guys go ahead and do that because we're spoon feeding you some retail market bullshit. But at the top here, we all got it covered. Don't worry. Yeah, it's it's a thing. But 
we aren't the big people that are going to make the wave, so we ride the wave, and we right. need to look at the. I think overall it's positive. I look, I I can't find an with all the bad news that came out. Oh, I mean, nothing happened. Yeah, you just need a VPN. That's why. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, wasn't there something in the bill that was like we're going to send you to jail if you get caught using a VPN or some shit? How the fuck are they going to do that? Bro, I don't know. It's just dumb shit that they put in the bills. Like this is this is stupid. Let's roll this back around to Gala, right? This whole proposal is like a bill put forth of like what we're gonna do, and then hidden inside there, in two fucking lines, is basically saying, "Oh, and by the way, we're gonna penalize you for taking this Gala out for this node that you're running because mm -hmm. you're providing this actual decentralized network to the actual network, but you're gonna get penalized if you take it out because it impacts our centralized it's just business. Tiny model. little, yeah. tiny little spot, right? Like right. so, it's like." get the fuck out of here so yeah it's interesting i think one of the biggest <laughs> issues that the sec has is that you know no matter what no matter how no matter what they they can only regulate the institutions acting in the market on u.s soil right they cannot regulate they are not the global regulators of ethereum and bitcoin and all these other no but coins as jesse will point out they can still go after you even if you are doing business in the u.s and you're not following U.S. rules, they can still go after you, which they can. Right, sure. but they can't regulate the actual tool. Correct. Is the problem? Yeah, yeah. You know, they can regulate the U.S. dollar. Correct. They can do that because that is their job with Treasury. Yeah. The government. They're going to regulate it to are. death. But they cannot. <laughs> Ethereum, and Bitcoin are doing their job. You know, they are a global value store that is not necessarily able to be regulated by anybody other than the foundations that run them. I mean. Speaking of the dollar, domestic soil is one thing. Oh, yeah. that's an ugly chart, sir. This is the just the dollar, and it's you know, obviously people will trade the dollar against other things, but um, it's just showing weakness in itself. And uh, if I were a you know somebody that was looking at the dollar in terms of FX trading, FX trading, I would say this looks like an you know the 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 parabolic move up. And when that crashes, what's this thing here? All right, look at the curve. So you get your little parabolic curve. Hit it through the line. Don't do that. There we go. And so when it breaks, usually it's, I think, Paul Brandt. He's like a classic um, technological trader. And he got so much shit in 2018 when... Uh, Bitcoin did its parabolic move up and then uh, and then uh, broke that parabolic curve. And he's like, oh, this is going down. I think it's I think it's like a minimum of 50 percent from the top. Right. And so in terms of you can use fib sequences or whatever you want to use um, to get you that. But we are at the 50 here. This is that. But realistically, I would say we're going down below 100 if I were looking at it right. So um, one stronger got listed it's, as inactive right do you see that i don't know man yeah. that, that, that thing was such a such a fuck. awesome um, we, i only mentioned it because we we've talked about it several times on previous podcasts oh, how much of a scam it was yeah but it got listed as inactive on coin get did uh, it okay yeah. well that makes last, sense last week or the week before that makes sense coin gecko and then the other one i was looking at was there's a news article that says that um you should pull up algorithm oh um actually i'm gonna put some so one of the d5 on. protocols that holds 55 percent of our Algor ground is closed and gone gone really oh. ouch mm. ouch that's ugly that's ugly that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh that's a lot of ugliness on that sucker um i'm gonna pull something up real quick here um it's a new because everybody loves nodes i have this is pure shit coinery and pure speculation i just want i just want to i just want to put that out there before i actually click this open for people um because yeah we're coming up on an hour so we'll we'll finish we'll wrap this up i'm gonna drop this this little interesting tidbit here and I'll put a link in. Oh yeah, God! Did you look at this one? Like, yeah, I, I I looked a little bit off of what you said earlier. So, again, this is this is a 
decentralized game data transfer. It's on the it's on BNB. They have their own wallet. Um, to be completely upfront with everybody, I already bought some nodes for two reasons. One is I had some BNB that I found on a wallet, and right. two, I uh, wanted to test it with Nerd Node. Um, so if we can, we can we push it out to Nerd Node because they're are charging those people. Official Squishmallow icons. These. Oh, no, those are Doge. Okay, those are those are the little Doge. I was gonna say, it gets real interesting if it's all squishy, my <laughs> Kids love those things, dude. I know, right? Um, so yeah, so testing it for Nerd Node because they're literally charging people. So if you buy it, here's the requirements for the node itself. Um, so if you buy the node, they're like, oh, we'll run the node for you too, and they're charging a hundred dollars per month. So I'm fairly certain we're gonna be a lot cheaper than that. But yeah. At least nerd know we can offer that service if people actually go down that road. So, anyways, this is one to do your own research. We will probably do a, an article through uh, FIC, put that out there. And uh, I mean, the, the nodes aren't selling that fast. Just FYI, there. It's, it's been like the that. same. It's been the same for the last week since I've been looking at it. It says this is not an investment product. This is not an investment product. Oh wait, is that what it says? It says it right there. At the oh yeah. So it, yeah. Whatever yeah. you do, don't buy it as an investment. It says this is not an investment product. Only buy it if you want to um, give. Oh, here you go. Yeah, yeah. Merium twenty five hundred. Strictly prohibits any types of abnormal marketing and sales activities, including resale and multi level marketing. You know, it's funny. There was, I think, that was on the green nodes, on theirs as well. Like, oh, this is an MLM when they literally run their stuff like MLM. And this isn't. This isn't one of rights. I don't think so. I, I didn't see his name or anything on it. Um, so, but again, we're we're doing some research in house on some of the stuff on here. So, claimable PMG transfer PMG to your wallet. I don't even know what PMG is worth. I know nothing outside of initial research that I'm doing right now. So, but I'm just letting you guys in early so you can get, check it out yourself, see what's going on. Anyways, one. Uh, let's see, where's Bitcoin? Where's Big Daddy? Big Daddy looks so good. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys Bitcoin. we're gonna leave it there but you'll hear more from michael and i in the future and uh hopefully we'll get some other cool guests on and talk soon some cooler guests some cool guests mm -hmm. there's nobody cooler than you <laughs> right. Right. nobody nobody Bye -bye. all right guys we'll see you see you see you later Oh, <laughs>